Welcome back. So what did you think of the live production this morning on what is motivation? What state do you live in? After seeing the live, you might have had some questions pop up and go, hey, I really want to delve more into this and understand more about this motivation, what it is, how it affects me, and why it is so important in everything that we do. Now, I have committed to you to keep those lives a little bit shorter because I can tend to get really carried away because I get excited. I get motivated to bring this material to you. But I understand sometimes on Monday morning that to watch the entire live and to tune into the live broadcast may or may not be time effective for you. So you want to have something to come back to. This bonus material where we really dig into the nuts and bolts of how we take the exciting part of what you learned this morning or another morning if you're tuning into this at a different time and put it into action. So I'm going to ask again, what state do you live in? Florida, California, New York, Iowa, Indiana. What about a state of motivation, a state of energy or a state of lack thereof? Where are you really? What state are you in? And what is this thing called motivation? What is it really? Where does it come from? Is it an outside factor that you bring in? Were you born with it as a baby? Do you learn how to do it by studying it and writing it down and memorizing how to do motivation? So let's ask the question, what is motivation? Is it a thing? Is it a skill that we learn to do? Is it a talent we're born with? Maybe little bits and pieces of that are accurate right there, but really what it is, is it's an overall state of being. Being motivated, having that be a part of who you are. Are you motivated? Are you a motivated person? Can you jump up and down at a seminar or something and go, I am motivated, I am motivated, and all of a sudden you kind of feel it? Yeah, that does happen. Question is, does it last beyond that learning event or that educational program or that moment in the morning you're doing it? And this is what we're really after uh, with the Monday motivation, etc., cetera, uh, with the entire motivation blog and getting you to use this tool this state that you should live in. See, we live in a state or a province, depending on what part of the world you're in. But just because you live somewhere, have you ever heard the old adage, and this has been around for a long time, whether you're stateside or somewhere else in the world, but the old song, my heart is in San Francisco, and that somebody who fell in love with a city where they wanted to live and didn't live there or my heart is in Rome, or wherever the case is, or New York. Um, how about bringing that motivation into the heart? So now we're going to get past the, you know, hey, let's get philosophical here and enjoy this. Let's get into some of the nuts and bolts of black and white. Let's get into this science and the anatomy of a state. And motivation is a state. That's what it is. It's that overall state of being that you can get in. It can be unmotivated and just kind of getting through it, or it can be genuine motivation, which just comes from the heart and exudes out of who you are. Not, hey, how you doing? I'm motivated. Nice to meet you. We don't want fake motivation. We want that stuff that just bellows out of us 24-7. When we're around people, they notice, hey, there's something about that person. I enjoy being around that person. That person uplifts me. This feels great. Um, that's where we want to be in that state of motivation, not a false, forced, I got to act motivated. And not the opposite, which is the unmotivated, which is oftentimes mistaken as a laziness. So let's get into it here. State of motivation. How do we get there? There's a triad. And triad being a triangle, you've got your base, your sides, your sides. That's a three-sided triad of the anatomy of motivation. 
first one is physiology. And this could very well be the most important, or maybe it's not, depending on the time. These are the types of things that some of this is very scientific and some of it is very much so an art of motivation. So now you're sitting there going, okay, coach, is it a science? Is it an art? Is it a learned behavior? Here we go again. We have all these questions coming up and today is designed to shed some light on that for you. But the reality is it may just very well be all of the above combined at different levels at different times, depending what your outcomes are. So let's get into that. First off, let's go into the physiology of motivation. Let's start out by looking at what the physiology may not be. When you're not motivated or you're down and out or downtrodden, where do your shoulders go? They sink. And I know we've been here before. What happens to the tone and speed of your speaking? It kind of draws out. Your breathing gets kind of huffy and light. And you just kind of look old and tired. Snap out of that and think of a time. And this is the important thing. Sometimes this is where you need to go is back. This is the only time I want you going back in thought is when it's to learn from something or go back to a thought or a moment where you were really excited or motivated or something got you to where you wanted to go. So think of a time when you just felt excited and you were unstoppable. You could not wait. You were like at the beginning of a race. You could not wait for that whistle or that bang to get you to go on the race. And you just felt like you could not be stopped and you couldn't wait to get into the task at hand or the moment, or maybe you were seeing your favorite uh, rock concert, going to a rock concert, and you couldn't wait to get in those gates and see your, your favorite band come on the stage. You were motivated to get in there. It wasn't like some days of maybe going to school and your worst subject going walking in that classroom going, oh my God, I gotta do an hour of this. You see the difference? It's very real. It's very physiologically based and it is an emotional, physical response to how you're viewing it. What are you, what are you linking to that? But that's where we're going to go next is on the focus and the psychology of it. Right now we're in the physiology. So if you feel great and motivated to learn something with me today, are your shoulders back? Are you sitting up? Are you looking? Are you interacting? Are you talking back to me? If I ask a question, are you answering it or are you just sitting there going, Okay, I know I need this shit, uh, stuff. <laughs> yes, it got you there. Got you a little bit awake. Yes, we do use potty mouth when necessary around here. So getting in that physical state, breathing, put the look on your face, add a smile, look with that expectancy and be ready. I am ready. I am motivated. No matter what the challenge, I'm coming after it. I am coming for you, challenge. It may be a challenge, it may be something exciting, but whatever it is, get that physical state. If you're just slumped in a chair, get up, shake your body out, breathe, yell, pound your chest. We'll talk about setting anchors later. We're going to do a whole section on setting anchors, how to fire something off and make that move that just makes you feel unstoppable and motivated. But right now, what I want you to understand is that physical is a huge key component of motivation. If you're up, your eyes are open, you're smiling, your face is back. Now, if you're going in, if you're an MMA fighter and you're going in the ring and you're going in, hey, come on, dude, let's get it on here. That might not be the tone of motivation you want. You may put on some heavy metal rock blasting, butt kicking music and be like, I'm ready. Okay. That's great physical motivation for that. If you're going in to go on a date and you might not want to go, I'm ready, I'm here, and I'm going to take you to dinner, baby. You might have a different strategy. You might come in and be just, mm -hmm. make her feel like she's the most important lady in the world. Exude that energy with a little bit of mystique. But you're motivated and you don't come in and say, yeah, hey, how you doing? Let's go here and grab a bite to eat, huh? Maybe. <laughs> if that's what's going to motivate your dinner date, that's what to do. But I would imagine if you showed up with confidence, 
feeling great with a positive expect, expectancy for what's going to happen, and your physiology exudes that you are motivated to do whatever it takes in the situation. Take a sales meeting. If you walk in, it's like, hey guys, what's up? Um, you know, we got we got some stuff going on this week. It's going to be a, you know a, a big week, and you know everybody. If you walk in the door and you go, guys, this is our week to shine. I'm telling you, this is a team, as a group. We're going to pull this off. I need you. And they're going, hey, he believes in what's happening this week. This is absolutely awesome. So I'm giving you lots of random examples, but hopefully you can see the differences in physiology is really what I'm getting at. I'm not trying to give you specific scenarios all the time of this is how you must behave on a date or in a business meeting or this, that, or the other. Let's not be that rigid. Let's just understand and watch. And hopefully I am exuding the type of motivation or lack thereof in showing you the examples. And sometimes it may be a little over-exaggerated or a little under-exaggerated, but yeah, see if you're paying attention. The point being is so that you can watch me and I can lead you through the process so you can see on the physiology what's going on. That is the important part of what we're coming to you to talk about is not black and white take notes, this is how I must behave, but so you go, oh yeah, if I'm like this, I'm not exuding a whole lot of motivation. If I'm like this, even if I'm speaking calmer, and I'm not going, yay, but I'm exuding that positive feeling there you go see that's where it can be adjusted to the situation because you don't want to become a mirror of me in certain situations you want to become an enhanced version of your own states where you take it to that top level without coming across fake to yourself or to others so do we have the physiology the physiology of motivation is something that makes the blood flow, the adrenaline go with that positive. You want to keep that positive connotation so you don't get all stressed out because stress and excitement are very similar, similar physiologically, but it's the positive yes, or the negative that throws the challenge there. So are we good there? Hopefully, give me a thumbs up. Yep, we're good. Ready to rock. Okay, how about number two? Psychology. Have you ever had a time where you didn't know how you were going to do something, but you knew you were going to do it? You were going to get it done. You were committed. You were going to figure it out no matter what. Think about it. Did you ever have a conversation with somebody where they're like, oh, yeah, I'm going to take care of that, and don't you worry about it, and da-da-da-da, and you walked away from that comment, that uh, communication with the individual going, that's the biggest crock of BS I've ever heard. They're not going to follow through, and I know it. Well, that's where psychology comes in. You can tell the difference in someone else or within yourself whether they're congruent with the motivation to follow through. Are they really going to do it? I mean, we've all had those times where even we know what I just said was total BS and I'm not going to follow through. Or worse yet, you're like, yes, this would be so cool. This would be so awesome to do this. I'm so motivated to do this. And then that little voice back here goes, who are you kidding? Really? You're going to run a Spartan race and you're 382 pounds and you haven't been off the couch in six months? And then you go, oh, yeah, well, it's just not me. Yeah, yeah. But it would be nice. Oh, crap. It would be nice. Either you go for it or you don't, but that's in the psychology. You know, that same person that may be 382 pounds, and trust me, if that's you and, and I'm not judging you, especially if you're going to get up and make be going to do a Spartan race or something like that, or sometimes even going for a walk, might be a big jump. But if you're motivated to do it, Day one, you might be motivated to walk for five minutes. You carry that out a year, two years, and you're running that Spartan race even if you started at 382 pounds and barely mobile. These are the things that make the difference. The psychology is in direct relation to the belief. Do you believe you can do something? 
it, without shutting it down. We all say, oh, I can do that. Or sometimes we start out saying, I'm not that kind of person. I could never do that. Well, let me tell you something. You just literally took down any motivation you could have. I would rather see you try really hard and fall short of a goal by this much than not try at all and get nothing. Nothing is a goose egg. If you don't put any psychology and energy into something and there's no belief, you get nothing. And worse than that, you go backwards over your shoulder and you reverse. Let's say, for instance, weight loss. Let's just use that as an example. A lot of folks out watching might be motivated because they want to take off some weight. If you do nothing, people say, well, I'm just going to stay where I'm at. No, if you do nothing, you're still going to change. You're going to go backwards. You are not going to ever stay where you are. You're either moving forward or moving backwards. You might have a temporary second of being in a static position, but if you don't do anything to move forward and better, you're going backwards. Trust that. There is no staying where you're at. Secondarily, if you are moving forward and you don't celebrate some of your wins, and you're not focused on where am I in measuring, you may go in a direction that's just okay. But when you put your psychology, aka your focus, into getting motivated to something, and you really get motivated, and I'm talking really get motivated, to where you put all your focus into it, you don't kind of dabble in it, you go for mastery, you will achieve it and that motivation will build and that's where it builds that emotional endurance that we talked about before. Having the endurance to go through it when it's not exactly fun. When you think, I'd rather not be doing this physical step towards this next level. See how it's starting to interact together? When you think that you'd rather not be doing it but you still do it and then you feel great after, which builds more motivation, that's called emotional endurance. And you have to be motivated to get an emotional endurance. Then the emotional endurance helps motivate you to the next level. It's a really unique phenomenon, and it sounds like a whole lot of work. And yes, anything worth having is work. And initially, as you're training yourself how to have true and genuine motivation, it's work. You ever drove a stick shift car? Some people are going, uh, I don't even know what that is. Other people are going, oh yeah, that's all we had when we were initially starting to drive. You certainly didn't get in that thing and go, wow, three pedals, two legs, uh, two hands, two separate things to do. Oh, wow. And then I've got to meld the gas and the clutch together. It was a, a lot. It was overwhelming. But all of a sudden you start doing that. And those of us who do drive or have driven a stick shift car and love it, there's certain things about it. It's that upper level distinction of I'm in control of this that makes you even more motivated. It's more fun, more exciting. I know I use a lot of crazy examples, guys, but hopefully these are hitting home to you. If, they, if one doesn't, pass it on. Go to one that does. We want to get into what makes sense to you to get you motivated because that's why you're here. You're looking for motivation. You're looking for fulfillment in life. That's why you're tuning into this. Not to sit there and go, okay, I got to do this because my boss sentenced me to this CEU or this or that. This is simply you are doing this for you, the ones you love, and doing it for your success. So I said there's a triad, right? We've got the physical and the psychological. And everybody's like, okay, what else is there? There is the spiritual. And what I'm not going to do here is talk to you about a specific religion, a specific, you know, om, om, or this, that, or a specific prayer to do. That's up to you, your spirituality. And some people tell me, well, they don't have a religion. Some people have a very, you know, extreme belief in their religions. Whatever that is right now, I'm respecting that for you. But even if you claim you don't have a religion or you don't believe in spirituality, I only believe in God, believing in God is spirituality. Believing the people that, you know, talk about believing in the universe, you know, 
Uh, that's spirituality. I do have a little glitch on that one. I say, well, where do you think the universe came from? But, you know, anyhow, the, I respect everybody's beliefs. And that's where I'm not going to get into that side of spirituality. But what spirituality is, is your connection to your creator, whoever you call him, your connection to yourself and your connection to others. How the heck does this play into motivation? What does that have to do with it? Well, who's a parent? Raise up your hands. I know you are, and I know you are, and I know you're not, but that's okay because different stages, different choices, whether you're a parent or not, even if you're not a parent, you usually have nieces and nephews or little brothers or little sisters. You've got somebody who looks up to you or may be dependent upon you. Well, that's where you connect to a higher power, a higher calling than yourself to be motivated. So let's, let's contrast here. You're a single guy, single gal, whatever. You know, you're just starting out in life. What do you need? A little apartment, some transportation. You might not even need a car, depending on where you live. You know, just be on a bus route. You know, a job, some food, some clothes on your back, and, you know, power. And maybe a TV and some internet. And, well, we could go on and on. But, you know, at that stage of life or that position... You don't need as much because you're kind of focused on who? Yourself. Now, even people who are really young or don't have, you know, family responsibilities sometimes really do focus way beyond themselves. But let's just, you know, for example's sake, when you're 18, 20 years old, or in my case, 16 when I started out, what do you, what are your focuses, your basic needs, uh, the me, your focus is here for the most part, which is okay. Doesn't make you right or wrong or indifferent. That's a stage of life where you're there. Well, you meet somebody great and you start to have a relationship and all of a sudden you're taking that to the next level. Now what's your focus? Well, now I gotta make sure that I'm helping to take care of my significant other or spouse if you're married at that point. And you start going, oh, there's a little bit more to this. There's more to this than me. So your, your spirituality there grows to encompass somebody else or others. You know, maybe you met somebody in, that, that has children already at that stage, and now you've got a built-in family. Now, well, now it's, you, know, you can't have that little efficiency apartment and be riding the bus every day. Now you need bedrooms for kids or and you want a car and you want to grow and you've, got, and you've got a future. You're motivated to do better by your spiritual needs and your spiritual desires to grow and contribute. You with me on this? Growth and contribution. Bingo. These are very important in the spiritual side of motivation. So now we come along and you've got kids, you've got a family and maybe you have a business or you have people, now you're in a, a job that's more meaningful than the initial job you may have started with, and now you've had to expand again. You're motivated by the spiritual need to grow, become better, produce more, and contribute more because there's more than just yourself and your life. You see where I'm going here. This growth and contribution is coming in big time at the spirit at the spiritual level. And this is ultra important to understand because this can be the most motivating thing in the world. Let's rewind a personal example. I'm tooling along, you know, younger, younger guy. And, you know, life is okay. Things are going good. I'm working hard, but you know, I'm not super, super overly extra responsible. I don't own a home. I own a few vehicles because back then I was in the car business kind of, sort of. Um, in the auction business, working a few auctions. Bought a little fixer-upper house and pow! I find out, guess what? I'm going to be a daddy. Okay, well, a couple of things. I'm going to have a baby. Can't have a car without air. Can't just roll down the windows in Florida and hope you, your newborn is going to be, you know, okay with not having air. Really don't want to raise my child in the neighborhood, even though I owned the home there. Wasn't the place to raise a child, although it was one of those neighborhoods where one house was great, the next house was, you know, 
questionable activities going on in it. And the next street over was million dollar homes, but didn't want to raise a child there. Okay, here's some motivation. Vehicle wasn't good enough. House wasn't good enough. Boom. Changed it. Motivation came from the spirit. Time to grow, but mostly out of the base of contribution for my child. Child comes along great. She's beautiful. We're in the nice new townhouse over, you know, in a much better neighborhood. Great neighbors. Nicer vehicle. Um, she starts to walk. You know, we're out one day and scooting around with the stroller and I see a for sale by owner. It's not a townhouse. It's a nice home with a fenced in yard. Not a multi-billion dollar mansion, but a, a step up from a parking lot. I don't want my little girl to be playing in a parking lot as a toddler. They don't know enough to stay out of traffic. It's dangerous. You know, the, the neighbor next door is noisy. The neighbor next door is, you know, waking her up in, in the middle of the night. And, you know, I start to go, uh. So, boom, next level. Nice house with a fenced yard. Awesome. And the story goes on and on and on, turns into a real estate story, ultimately of growth and growth and growth and contributing back to the fact that I wanted my child to grow up in the best environment possible. So there was the drive. You see where I'm talking about on the spiritual side. What it is, is talking about how the spiritual side of you can motivate you. So we went through some examples. So the physiology Getting in state, the physical state of motivation, the first side of your triad, psychologically believing you can, letting it excite you and being awesome about it, and then the spiritual growth and contribution out of what works motivation the system and what places can be in others. So, how do you intensify the states? Physical, peak state. This is the simplest way to put this. You're not going to get there by being in a joyful state. Peak state, stepping up, feeling great, energy, put a look on your face, make a move, install some anchors. We're going to go over that in the future. But here we go. I'm starting to slouch down. I'm getting into the conversation with you here. And I'm going to ba ba Now, step up. Boom. Energy. Boom. Energy. Boom. Energy. Boom. Energy. You see how the physical, you can usually see it in the face and the eyes. Over-exaggerating? Maybe. You might think I'm over the top on this. Some people might think, hey, still not a top performance. Totally up to you, but it's awesome. So now we're going to focus on the positive. We're going to connect to the power of why. What am I doing up and beyond for somebody else? And take it to the next level. And I'm going to cut this one here by introducing the fact that next week's topic is going to be how do we use pain and pleasure to drive our motivation. Because those are the two driving forces. That's what we have coming up. I'm going to encourage you to live with energy, passion, always live your dream, Stay motivated, create your motivation tools, and reach out to me at revitalizelife.com. Connect with us, and we'd be happy to grow in upon this and do more live seminars, more uh, broadcast seminars. We're excited to connect with you. Very excited. Please let me know. Please give me feedback as to what you think of this, and I want to know in my heart that I'm bringing value to you. Again, live with energy, passion, always live your dreams. This is Coach Lou Bronstein, Revitalize Life Fitness, live from Studio 700 in Longwood, Florida. Have an amazing day, my friends. Love y'all.